Hi grade nines, this is the second lesson for congruency and today's focus will be on naming triangles. As I said earlier on in yesterday's lesson, it is quite important to understand how you name the triangles. This leads to triangle geometry in grade 12 when you get to that. Okay, so let's just recap. Whenever two triangles are congruent, we can state the following. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, and as I mentioned yesterday, the three horizontal lines means is congruent to. So you don't have to write the words. This is math, so we just use the symbol, three horizontal lines. Okay, so what we have here is triangle ABC with information, numerical values, and triangle D, E, F. Okay, so this 152 shouldn't be here. Right, so there we go. Those are the two triangles. Now, the naming of triangles in terms of their corresponding equal angles is important when using congruency notation. Now, let's, let's do this. So, what I want to do first of all is let's write down what we see here. 45 and 45. So that means that angle D, remember to represent an angle, is a capital letter with the upside down V. Angle A is equal to 45 degrees. So all I'm doing now is writing down what is given. Angle D is equal to 45 degrees. So from there, we can say angle A is equal to angle D. Correct. Then we can say that angle B is equal to angle E because both of them are 105 degrees. So we have angle B is equal to angle E. And then we have the third angle, which is angle C. And angle C is equal to angle F. So that's the first set of information. Now let's list down which sides are equal to each other. So as you can see, AB is 66, DE is 66. So what does that mean? It means that AB is equal to D. And in the same way, you've got BC is equal to EF. And then you've got AC is equal to DF. In geometry, we try to write or arrange the variables in alphabetical order. Okay. So what we can see here is the corresponding angles are equal and the corresponding sides are equal. Now, a triangle or the triangles can be named in different ways, but the order of the corresponding equal angles is essential. For example, I can talk about ABC. Now, if I mention angle A first, so if I say triangle ABC, so I've mentioned angle A first. Now, when I'm comparing it, so we know that the triangles are congruent. Okay? So when I talk about angle A first, which angle is equal to angle A? It's angle D. So I've got to start with angle D. So when you look at it, you know from looking at the way it's written that angle A is equal to angle D. Now if I start with B, which angle is equal to B? Angle E. So angle E follows. And then angle F is equal to angle C. And when you read this, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So angle A is equal to angle D, as we can see. Angle B is equal to angle E, as we can see. And angle C is equal to angle F, as we can see. Now there's something interesting. Without looking at what we've written down about the sides, AB will be equal to DE, correct? There we go. And I'm just reading from the statement here. BC will equal to EF, correct? And AC is equal to DF. There it's written there. So can you see, boys and girls, it is important to name the triangles correctly. Now what if I didn't want to say ABC? What if I wanted to say triangle BC, BAC? Which is not wrong, provided you name the other triangle correctly. So if I say triangle BAC, so if I want to say triangle BAC, this triangle is congruent to that triangle, how, how would I name the second triangle? Now let's go back to what I said there. Angle B, I started with angle B. Which angle is equal to angle B? Angle E, so you start with angle E. 
You don't even look at the diagrams. You just have to look at what you have listed here as equal. You mentioned angle A next, so you've got to mention angle D next. And angle C, so you've got to say angle F. So triangle BAC is equal to triangle EDF in that order. And if I go back, BA is equal to ED. BA is equal to ED. AC is equal to DF. And BC is equal to EF. Okay, so naming triangles is essential. Now what will not, what will be incorrect? What will be considered incorrect and incorrect naming of triangles? So let's quickly show you. So if I say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FED. Triangle A and tri sorry, angle A and angle F are not equal. Angle B is Okay, in this case, angle B is equal to angle E, that's fine, but angle C is not equal to angle D. So this is incorrect naming of triangles. Okay, boys and girls, I hope it's making sense to you. Again, if you look at page 153 of your textbook, there is more explanation there. Okay, now I'm going to look at the second example. Also taken out of your textbook, but I'd like to explain it to you. So how would I name these two triangles? So first of all, are they congruent? Yes, because you've got enough information in each of the triangles showing the corresponding sides and angles are equal. So step one, let's list what we have equal in order to name the triangles correctly. Okay, so in this particular example, they've used different symbols and you are allowed to do that. So you don't always have to use arcs, you can use, you can even identify them with a variable there. So if I put x there, I'll put x there. So the little symbols are just showing which ones are equal. Brought in a variation of symbols here. So angle E is that little circle with a cross in it. So we have angle B, which has the same thing, which means angle E is equal to angle B. Okay, then you've got the solid dot. So because I spoke, used that triangle first, I'm going to start with those angles. So, angle D in that triangle is equal to angle A in that triangle. And then we've got C2 there. Remember, we are working with EDC first. Therefore, I'm mentioning all the angles in that triangle first. Angle C2. Remember, C is divided into two parts, so you've got to say C2. Because C2 falls in triangle ECD. C2 is equal to C1. It's given and it's also vertically opposite. So those are the angles now. Now I'm not going to list the sides according to the diagram. I'm going to show you how we can get the sides that are equal by just naming the triangles correctly. So let's talk about it. Triangle. So assuming I would say CDE. I want to say triangle CDE. So triangle CDE will, will be congruent to which triangle? How would I, obviously ABC, but how would I name it? So let's look at angle C. Angle C, and remember that C2, but we can say C. <coughs> CDE, it's referring to that triangle. You don't have to put the two there. If you want to, you may. It's just telling you that you know which angle you're referring to. So C2 is equal to C1. So I've got to start with C in that triangle. D as we've written, is equal to A, so I've got to put an A next. And then E is equal to B, so I've got to put B. So triangle CDE is equal to triangle CAB. If I said CDE, let's write this down, is congruent to triangle CBA, this will be incorrectly named because angle B is not equal to angle D. So this is incorrect naming of triangles. That is the correct way of naming the triangles. Now let's look at this. From here, what do I have? Let's list the sides that will be equal based on if this is correct naming of triangles. You look at the first two. Remember, two alphabets together gives you the side. So CD, so we're going to figure out, is CD equal to CA? Then we've got DE and AB. DE is equal to? A, B. And then you've got C, E is equal to C, B. 
So let's look at the diagram. CD, CD is, has three little lines. Is it equal to CA? Yes, there it is here. DE equals to AB. Let's look at it. Is DE equals to AB? Yes. And is CE equal to CB? Yes. So again, if you name your triangles correctly, you can actually get your equal sides from there. Okay, boys and girls, that is all I'm going to do for today's lesson. The focus, as I said to you, is on naming triangles. Now, let's go to the worksheet. So in the work schedule, you would see I've written down do page one of the worksheet. And this is the worksheet I'm talking about. Now, this exercise... I think I, I complete page one and I've also given you exercise. So I'm going to do a couple of questions here and then you are going to go and do the exercise that I've asked you to do and I think it's exercise three on page 156. But again, please refer to your work schedule at the end of your lesson or at the start of the lesson so you know exactly what you have to do for each lesson. I've given you a detailed breakdown there. I've even told you to mark and correct the exercise. Then you watch the videos, then you go over the notes, and then I've told you which exercise you need to do. And I've done that for every single day. So please, the weekly planner and the daily schedule that Mr. Reyes Misa sends out is just a summary. It's not a detailed one, so please don't refer to that only. In fact, I would prefer, if you look at the daily work schedule on Google Classroom, that I update frequently for you so you have everything there and if you missed a day's work for whatever reason maybe you were ill or you didn't have connection or whatever reason you can always go back it's there it's uploaded on google classroom and i've got it the topics labeled as each day and date is allocated there and it's it's quite clearly identified and categorized for you but again if you have questions about it if you're struggling like thank you to those learners who brought it to my attention for i don't know how i forgot to upload the memo that you were looking for exercise one so please let me know immediately so i can quickly go and check up i try to do it thoroughly but this was one mistake we all make mistakes and i apologize for that now let's look at this one page one in each case, state whether the pairs of triangles are congruent or not. So now in this exercise, they are not saying that the triangles are congruent. You've got to determine if they are congruent. And how do you determine if they are congruent? I don't want you to prove. We are not proving. All we are doing is identifying if the triangles are congruent. And if they are congruent, you need to state the condition or the case of congruency. Meaning SSS, SAS, AAS or RHS, one of the cases. Again, if you forgot, go to page 154, 155 in your textbook. So let me do a few questions with you here, and then you're going to complete this worksheet, and you are going to do exercise three. Now, yesterday I didn't give you a lot of work to do, and today you have a little bit more, but not, not too much. It wouldn't take you a long time. It's just testing the theory. I'm hoping you are doing the work and you are marking your answers. I do not upload the memos on the same day. I deliberately upload them the next day because I want you to try out the work first before looking at the answers. And I also hope you are correcting your answers and doing corrections in your workbook. You have to do it. You work like you would work if you were in a normal lesson. You do your work in your workbook, you date your work, you mark it with a pencil, and you correct the ones that you have wrong. That's what you should do, and that helps you understand and, and you are able to identify the areas you are struggling with. Okay, now let's look at A. Always list what you have first. <coughs> so what do we have here? We have L1, Q1, and N. So this little symbol here is telling you that those two angles are right, are right angles. So we have right angle. Okay. You have a common side here, remember, H. Now, we need another side. Do we have enough information here? If they are congruent, state the case of congruency and state the remaining pairs of equal angles and pairs of equal sides. Okay, so we have two bits of information. H, sorry, it's not H, it's S. That's the hypotenuse side, that's the hypotenuse side. There is no evidence that they are equal. So what do we do? Can we assume they are equal? No. So this triangle is not congruent. So triangle L, 
LON is not congruent. So triangle LON. Now remember, I started with LON. I've got to say it's con it's not. So how do you write not congruent? You just write down not congruent to triangle. Oh, you could. Let's do this class. Let's just say not congruent. If they are not congruent, you don't have to name them. You only name them if they are congruent. Okay. Let's look at B. You've got EV is equal to that, VR. You've got EW is equal to WR. So you've got side and side, and you've got the common side. So you've got a side. So they are congruent. So let's name them correctly. Remember, if they are congruent, you state the case of congruency and you name them. If they're not congruent, you just write not congruent, it's fine. Again, if you have access to a printer, you can print this out and do it on the worksheet. If not, just write down the question in your workbook and answer the question. You don't have to redraw the diagram, you've got reference to it. But if you want, you may. Now, SSS, <coughs> so which means E would equal to R. So if I'm going to say triangle E, V, W is congruent. I'm just going to write here. So angle E is equal to angle R. So I'm going to start with angle R. Okay? Angle W, and then we're going to go V. And if I look at it, E, V is equal to R, W. E, V is equal to R, W. Okay? We've got E, W is equal to R, V. E, W is equal to R, V. And then we've got VW is common. Okay, so that's EVW and we've got RVW or you could actually write R, RWV or RVW. In this case, both will work because all these sides are equal to each other. Now let's do another one. Let's do C. If you look at C, interesting, you've got numerical values here. This one is 90, that one is 90. That's given as 43. It's given that that is equal to that. Now, these two angles are not equal. So what do you do? <clears throat> you've got right angle, you've got a side. So you've got an angle. I'm going to write it as an angle because the hypotenuse is not given. So you can't really use... The RHS. Please remember, if you have a 90 degree angle, it doesn't mean you can only use RHS for that diagram. It could also be an angle, as indicated here. You've got a side. <clears throat> so I need another side which I don't have, or I need another angle. Now, if you think about it carefully, these triangles are just shifted. They've, they just turned in a different direction. If I work it out, 90, if that's 90 and that's 43, 180 minus 90 plus 43, what will it give me? So 90 plus 43 is the 133. And 180 minus 133 would give me the 47 degrees. So this would be 47 and that will be 43. So you've got to work it out. And if you flip the triangle over, that would map onto that, that would map onto that. So these triangles are actually congruent. And you can say AAS. Okay, so these triangles are congruent. So which ones are congruent? So we're going to say triangle. So if I go EFG is congruent to triangle. If I'm talking about E, angle E is equal to angle N. So I've got to say N first. If I'm saying F next, I've got to say L and G would be equal to M. So FG is equal to LM. FG is equal to LM. And that's how you get the answers. Okay, boys and girls, I think you can continue with the rest. <coughs> so remember, all of these are not, it's not assumed that they are congruent to each other. You need to figure it out in the way that I've shown you. Some of them are tricky, so look like this one. That one also is tricky. There's no parallel lines here. So you can't make any assumptions. You just base it on what you see in the diagram. It's a different case if you see other indications of the diagram, like parallel lines or whatever. Like in this case, you've got two angles. So you can easily calculate the third angle using interior angles of triangle. 
Therefore, we have concluded that these triangles are congruent. They are just moved around and flipped over. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if they are flipped over. As long as they can fit onto each other exactly, they are congruent, meaning they are identical. Okay, please continue with your homework or the classwork for the rest of this lesson. And always remember, whatever is not finished as classwork, it is homework. That is an assumption that we make as teachers. So we expect you to finish your classwork and your homework. Okay, bye-bye. Have a nice afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow.